Hi, my name is Brendan Short, and today I'm going to talk to you about our work on a hybrid predictive control approach to trajectory tracking for a fully actuated biped. So first I'm going to introduce some of the concepts that we use in this work, then I'm going to go over our approach to modeling, then I'm going to talk about our control algorithms, and then I'm going to introduce some of our results. So what is a hybrid system? A hybrid system is a system that exhibits both continuous and discrete behavior. And so our way of modeling a hybrid system, H, as you can see here, consists of four components. We have a flow map, F, which is a set of differential equations that describes the continuous dynamics of a system. And we have a flow set, C, which is the domain of the continuous part of the system. We have a jump map, G, which consists of difference equations that describes the discrete dynamics of the system. And we have a jump set, D, which is the discrete domain. And if you look at this figure on the bottom left here, you can see when the system's in the flow set C, it um, evolves continuously, which is denoted by this blue line here. And um, when it is in both the flow and jump set, it can either evolve continuously, which is in the blue, or it can jump and make a discrete change, which is indicated by this red dotted line. And then when the system is in the jump set, it can only evolve uh, by jumping discreetly. Over here on the right, we can see a solution to a hybrid system, or the domain of a solution to a hybrid system, phi, which is parameterized by t, which is a real number that um, represents the amount of time that's elapsed, and j, which is an integer denoting the amount of jumps that have occurred so far. And so we use this hybrid notion to describe bipedal walking uh, as two phases. We have a swing phase and an impact phase. So during the swing phase, one of the legs is planted and the other leg is swinging out towards the next stepping point. Um, during the swing phase, we call the planted leg. Uh, the planted leg is the, the, the leg that's in contact with the surface and the swing leg is the leg that's reaching out toward the next step. At the impact, the legs switch roles and uh, we move on to the next step. So we model a biped as a three-link fully actuated biped with a state that consists of the limb angles, uh, theta, which consists of the planted leg angle, theta p, the swing leg angle, theta s, and the torso angle, theta t, and the limb velocities, omega, which consists of um, the planted leg velocity, omega p, the swing leg velocity, omega s, and the torso velocity, omega t. And since this is a fully actuated model, we're able to apply torques that control the, the movement of each of the limbs. So we have um, the input vector u, which consists of the input on the planted leg, up, that on the swing leg, us, and on the torso, ut. So the parameters of the system we have the length of the torso, uh, LT, and we have the length of the legs, LL. We have a torso mass, MT, a hip mass, MH, and the leg masses, ML, which are located in the middle of each of the legs. We have the gravity, uh, the gravity constant, rho, and then we have the step angle, phi S, which is the um, angle that the planted leg must reach in order for the next step to occur. We have the torso angle, phi t, which is the angle that we'd like to keep the torso at while we're walking. And we have the horizontal velocity, v, which is the horizontal velocity we would like to achieve on average uh, while the system's walking. So the dynamics of the system, we have the flow map, f of p, which describes the system um, during the swing phase. And that's for a certain state, x, and given input, u. And so we have the change in the limb angles equal to omega, which is the limb velocities, and we have the change of the limb velocities equal to alpha, which is computed as the acceleration of the limbs for a given state x and some input u. And the flow set c is all the states where the impact has not yet been reached, or the next step has not been reached yet, so still in the swing phase. Uh, we have the jump map g of p, which has t, which is a transformation matrix or transformation function that swaps the, the angles of the swing and the planted leg. And then we have this uh, big omega, 
which computes the new velocities of each of the limbs after the next step has occurred. The jump set, D of P, um, indicates the point where the next step has been reached, which is when the planted leg reaches the step angle and the planted leg is moving forward. Um, I should also note that this there's this uh, input computation function that computes the input required to achieve a certain acceleration alpha for some given state x. So now I'm going to talk about the control system. So our control system uh, contains three elements. We have a reference biped, H of R, which generates a trajectory of the desired periodic gait we want to achieve, and that's emulating um, a hybrid limit cycle of that periodic gait. So if you look down here, the red dashed line um, is this, this reference system. And as you can see, it is repeating the same step over and over. The step time t step is computed based on the parameters. And I'll talk about that a bit later. So we also have a virtual biped, h of z, which generates a trajectory to converge with the reference over the first two steps. So this dotted green line over here is this virtual trajectory and as you can see it starts here and after the first step it's able to converge with the reference. So this second step time that allows it to converge with the reference is called the impact to track time which I'll also talk about later. So we have the physical biped H of P which is the actual system we're trying to control and that over here you can see by the blue line. So this uh, physical biped has some control law kappa that allows it to um, track the virtual system and as you can see here it tracks the virtual system and then over time is able to converge as well. And so what this looks like this animation shows the reference which is the red dotted biped and the physical biped which is the blue real system. And so as you can see over the first two steps the biped is able to converge with the reference. And if you'll notice, it does not attempt to converge on the first step, but rather over the first two steps to get a nice smooth convergence. So the way that we generate the trajectories we want to achieve is by modeling each step as a solution phi with respect to time t. And this set of equations right here actually gives us a trajectory from some initial state xf to some, or some initial state x0 at time t equals zero to some final state xf at some time tf. So um, the system starts at x zero and then according to these equations evolves to state xf at time tf. And we do this by computing these coefficients, trajectory coefficients, using this initial and final state and the step time that we want. And this acceleration right here is what produces um, that, that trajectory. And so the way we use this is the virtual and reference biped systems have some additional state elements that allow us to generate these trajectories. So in addition to the biped state x, which exhibits the dynamics described earlier by fp, cp, gp, and dp, we also have a trajectory timer tau that we use to um, generate this trajectory. And that inque increases during the swing, uh, the swing phase and resets at the impact. And we also have the trajectory coefficients b, which are part of the state, and those are recomputed at impacts. And so the way that we use these extra elements is to generate that acceleration that we need using the b and tau. And then using that uh, input computation function I mentioned earlier, we're able to use this acceleration and the current biped state to generate the input we need in order to create the trajectories that we want. And so the coefficients are computed at each impact time for some initial and final state that we want and um, step time and that will give us the coefficients we need. So the reference system has a state R with uh, state elements Rx which is the biped state, R tau which is the trajectory timer state, and Rb which are the trajectory coefficients. And the system's given by this here. So in purple we have the biped, which uh, evolves according to the biped state, or the, the flow map given earlier, which is the biped state and this imp input law, uh, kappa r of r, which is just using the input computation function with the biped state and the computed acceleration to generate the input that we need. 
the timer uh, r tau increases during uh, during the step um, and resets at the impact. And at the impact, we use the initial and final states of the limit cycle, which are xi star and xf star, uh, which I'll talk about in the next slide, uh, and the step time that we need um, in order to generate the trajectory coefficients that will give us the limit cycle uh, of the desired gate. So the step time for the desired step trajectory, which we denote phi of uh, phi star, has a step time, t step, which can be computed using the biped uh, parameters. So two times the leg length sine of the step angle divided by the horizontal velocity will give us that step time. And then we compute the initial and final limit cycle states and coefficients such that the final limit cycle state um, will give us the initial limit cycle state when we apply the jump map to it. So um, our control algorithm, the control algorithm we use for the system with the virtual uh, and the physical biped, uh, at each impact of the physical system, um, we pre predict the time until the next reference impact. And so this is the time to track time delta tau, which ensures we have a sufficient step time to converge to the next reference step. So this time here, basically, it computes the amount of time until the next reference step, uh, so long as the reference step is within, um, sorry, let me, let me restate that. So this impact to track time computes the time until the next reference step if the, next refer if the reference system is less than halfway through its current step, or the time until the step after the next step if it is more than halfway through. So if you look down here at the bottom left, um, in this system, when the virtual or when the physical system has an impact, the next reference step uh, is used. The, the fault, the step after the next step is used. And over here, um, since the reference system is not halfway through its current step, we use the next impact. So the closed loop system that defines the control system is given by uh, the, the physical biped, H of P, with state X and the virtual biped h of z with state z, uh, which is similar to the reference in that it has zx, which is a biped state, z tau, which is a trajectory timer state, and zb, which is a trajectory coefficient. So the physical biped evolves according to the dynamics described earlier with this control law that allows it to track the uh, virtual system state. And then the virtual system evolves according to um, this mapping here, where the physical biped state z of x evolves according to the biped dynamics, and the jump map um, and the, the timer evolves continuously during flows and uh, is reset at jumps, and the trajectory coefficients are recomputed at every impact according to the new initial state, the final state of the limit cycle and the time to track uh, that, I, that I introduced in the previous slide. So the results we were able to achieve here is we were able to show that the difference between the limb angles and velocities of the virtual and reference systems becomes zero after the second impact occurs and remains zero for all future time. And also that the limb angles and velocities of the physical biped converge to those of the virtual system after the first impact occurs and remain there for all future time. And so what this means is we're able to have the virtual system finite time track the reference and we're also able to have the plant or the, the physical biped finite time track the virtual system and as a result we're able to show that the physical biped or the plant finite time tracks the reference. And so uh, we ran simulations with initial conditions, basically, where we ensure that all the requirements are met. So we have um, the biped initialized, the biped and uh, virtual system initialized to some point in the flow set. And we 
also initialize the reference system to some point in the hybrid limit cycle and we use these parameters for all the simulations and we also ran um, perturbations on the step angle to emulate an unknown slope so here's the system with no perturbations we just have uh, on the biped on a flat surface where every time the step angle is exactly uh, equal to phi s but we also randomized it so that say the uh, step angle has a positive perturbation which could emulate the system walking down a slope or a negative perturbation which could emulate the system walking up a slope. So what we're looking at here are the limb angles and the limb velocities. Again, this red dashed line is the reference system, the green dotted line is the virtual system, and the blue solid line is the physical biped. So as you can see here, after the first step occurs, the reference system is more than halfway through its current step so the virtual system has the impact to track time using the next reference step and it ha takes a longer second step to converge. Now here what we're looking at the first physical step occurs when the reference system is less than halfway through its step so we can actually converge at that first reference system step. And so you can see here the blue, um, the blue indicates a physical system which tracks the virtual system right away and then after the second step the virtual system catches up to the reference system uh, and then after that we're able to maintain convergence. So here what we're looking at are the limb angles and the step angle perturbation which uh, emulates some kind of unknown slope. And so again here in the beginning we have the first step the physical system tracks the virtual system and then after that attempts to track the reference but since we have this perturbation um, we have a step that occurs at a, diff at a slightly different time than expected but due to the control system we're able to reset and attempt to converge using this new unknown updated state uh, as the initial state every time and so even though we're getting uh, slightly different states than we expect we're able to maintain convergence with the reference to the best of our ability. And this system has up to 30% uh, step angle perturbations. So in this one, we have up to 60% of the step angle perturbations. So similar to the last slide, but just much larger perturbations. So first step, again, we have convergence with the virtual system, and then uh, convergence with the reference system. And again, we're attempting to keep uh, as close of convergence with the reference as we possibly can given these perturbations and sometimes even when we have a very big variation we're still able to continue to correct for that so lastly I have due to randomness uh, we generated this interesting system which obviously would not work in real life but I did think it was somewhat amusing so yeah and uh, this work was funded in part by CROSS, NSF, AFOSR, AFRL, and Citrus. And uh, I really appreciate their support with this. And that's all. Thank you.